Welcome to Fort Worth, Texas, and Eamon G. Carter Stadium, home of the TCU Horned Frogs. What a matchup we have in store. It's still early in the season, but this is a major test for a couple of squads who've gotten out of the gate undefeated. As we'll see a squad from the Big 12, the UCF Knights, taking on another team from the Big 12 in an interconference matchup, the TCU Horned Frogs. For EA Sports College Football, we Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Time to get this game started. Knights will boot it away to start the game. On the move from inside is five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes and they'll stop him at the 16. So TCU's offense will start this game off. Here he comes, and obviously a defense is always going to be aware of a quarterback, but boy, he finds a way to put defenses on their heels all the time, David. I mean, what can't he do? He's got the weapons, he's got the confidence, he's got the experience. Jesse, these kind of guys are so hard to defend. You're right. They'd better be able to find a way to get pressure on him, because if they don't, this is going to be a long day. Going to run it. It's Cook. Stacked up after gaining a couple to the 23. And the Horned Frogs will hustle to the line. When you have a conference as deep and balanced as this Big 12 is, it's important to get off to a quick start in conference play. Yeah, you're going to be challenged each and every week here in the Big 12 Conference. Since they've expanded, the quality of this conference has gotten so much better. So, David, big challenge here to make sure mentally your mind is right starting the season off today. Yeah, I mean, to make your dreams come true, it starts one game at a time, the old cliche. But the Big 12, year in and year out, so many different teams that can beat you, so many different teams that can put points up on the scoreboard. Got to start fast in Big 12 play. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. Wide out in motion. They'll run it from the gun. Pass the sticks, and he may get more. And he gets it to the 44-yard line. It'll be a first down. Back to throw. It's Hoover. Fires to the wide out. He's got it. A quick tackle made, but he's got plenty for the first down. The Horned Frogs come to the line with a fresh set of downs. Yeah, and you see the wide receiver. He's got to push up field, make it look like he's going deep, but does a really good job sitting down on that curl, catching the ball. And then as soon as you catch that thing on that curl route, get up field, get positive yards. Nice route by that wide receiver. Here comes the offense on second down. Both these teams just outside the top 25 and really needing to win a game like this to vault their way into the rankings. And it's just amazing winning a game like this, what it can do for your program, right? Recruiting, your confidence. Everything is better when you've got the number beside your name. And David, one of these two teams is going to get that number if they pull out the win. No doubt. And you continue to start the season off and build, right? Because you started with preseason. You start with getting into the year. And now you're starting to build and build and build and build that momentum. Getting a win against a really good team, finding out who you are, can set the tone for your season. They've marched to the red zone, and here they go. Finds his man. It's Payne. Makes the catch and knocked down. Going to work in the red zone. They can't pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. Wide receiver now comes in motion. Touch pass on the run. And a nice, solid pickup there before the defense wrestles him to the ground. Tight quarters deep in the red zone, but they can pick up a first down without scoring. Third down. Looking to throw for it. Can't make the connection on third down thanks to that tough, hard-nosed pass defense. And now it's fourth down. Try to get it on the ground. How about that defense rising up and stopping him short on fourth down? So the UCF Knights offense will try to get something going with their first possession. As dynamic as this guy is on the outside, Jesse, you know he's going to be peeking that way from the free safety position. Yeah, he's been watching the film. This dude in the middle, man, he can light people up. So you can't tiptoe. you got to be aggressive and run in there. But this is a pretty interesting matchup today. And I love safeties that make receivers think. Make them know they're going to be there over the middle of the field. And you better think twice about catching that football. He'll do it himself. 
They wrestle him to the ground, but he's got plenty for a first down. The Knights want to pick up the tempo. Ooh, I like that option play. I'd keep running that, too, because it's obvious. The defense right now is really keying in on this running back. That was a big point of emphasis. The expressway is wide open. The 30. Pass the 10. Touchdown, Knights! And once he found daylight, it was Katie bar the door, baby. Man, this guy is such a weapon because he's so dangerous. If he gets into the second level, great vision. And then David shows you the speed. Just straight wheels, erasing angles. A lot of times when you're chasing guys that are so fast like this, you're like, I got him, I got him. No, I do not. What a big, long touchdown run. Pad those stats, young fella. They'll try to add another to their lead. And with the extra point, they get the first seven of the game. Quick strike offense on that three-play scoring drive. And the points came courtesy of that 80-yard run to the house. And here's the return. He's brought down at the 16, would have been much better off to take the touchback. TCU will send its offense back onto the field. On that last drive, fourth and goal didn't exactly work out. They really need to pay it off this time, Jesse. And they were so anxious and eager to get back on the field. They know they left points on the board. They let that one get away from them. They look like they are pumped up and ready to go here. Today. And listen, it, it was a good drive, so you've got to remember that. But they got to realize, I got to get points. When I get in those areas, I got to capitalize. And they wanted a touchdown last time. This drive, they can go make it happen. Scanning the field, it's Hoover, right down the middle. Oh, he drops the football. He had him right down the gut of the field. Instead, it'll be second down. Give to the running back. Forges ahead, picks up about three to the 29. Balls at the 29, defense can taste getting off the field. It's third and long. From the gun, wants to pass. It's complete. And the defense makes the immediate tackle, but he has enough for the first down. Hard work pays off, guys. These offenses work so hard week in, week out, working on those critical down and distances, third downs. And having that conversion this early in the game, that's got to feel good for this offense. And I think they'll give him two on that one, second and eight coming up. Got a little work done on first down, now back to the line. They'll run it from the gun. And the freshman does a great job using his technique in getting the man on the ground. And the Horned Frogs headed quickly to the line. Motion by the back forces the defense to adjust. Pocket starts to collapse. And this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack. Not sure exactly what led to that, whether the protection wasn't right or the quarterback just didn't see it, but the result was a negative play in a sack. Well, one thing I do know is that quarterback had no chance to get that ball downfield. That pocket was breaking down, and it was breaking down quickly. There were just too many bodies in that backfield for the QB to make anything happen. The Horned Frogs will call on their punt team. On the move, looking for a little sliver of hope. And he's going to get it up to about the 29-yard line before he's brought down. UCF has it once again. What do you think about that? Got the first down and more. And the ball's on the ground. Now look what I found. I'd say that's a stroke of good fortune. The offense keeps it. Well, the offense is able to avoid disaster right there. Problem is they fumbled it, but thankfully they were able to jump back on and not have a turnover. Really confident throw and catch there. Big pickup, and they have a first down. Hand off from the gun. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Last play was a near disaster, now dealing with second and 13. The play-action fake. Going up top. 
And the incomplete pass, taking a shot on second down, and they'll be left with a third down. Really nice play by the defender, being in a good position for that deep ball down the field, not letting the receiver put his big body on him, go up over top. The only thing that could have been better is that thing tipped to another defender, and it was an interception, but great coverage by the defender. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. TCU has it back in the Horned Frogs go on offense. From the gun, they'll try to impose their running game. They needed to find enough space and get it moving forward, and they're up to the 22. That kind of pick up on first down, and you can take a shot here on second and short. Motion from the offense. They'll run the counter. Dragged down at the 26 after a pickup of five. Now on first and 10 from the 26. The give out of the gun. A collision, and he stopped at the 27 after picking up one. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Quickly complete. Giving him his pads. And they don't drag him down until he gets all the way to the 46-yard line. And the Horned Frogs want to move quickly. Wide receiver coming across in motion. He tries to take the top off. He's got it downfield for a huge game. The Horned Frogs have it with a first and ten. That's what's so scary about this offense. They've got guys in the perimeter that can change the game in one single play, and you saw it right there. Too much speed on the perimeter to create that explosive play. From the red zone, looking for a space. Got it in the middle. It's Richardson. They make the stop right there. Good pickup. It's still short of the first down. Operating in the red zone here on second down. He's looking to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact on the play, but no flags. It'll be third down. Boy, they'd love to pick up this conversion and go to work with a first and goal. And the ball is picked off. Trying to take it back. The 50. The 40. The 20. Inside the 10. Touchdown, UCF! A great return for the touchdown. Any return for a touchdown is a great one to a defense. What about the speed from that defender on the return? He's showing you, Reese, like, listen, it's not just wide receivers that can do that. I can take this thing to the house. I got some moves. Watch this. Unbelievable job flipping the field. Offense about to score. Defense makes the huge plays and gets points out of it. Lining up to add another. And the extra point pushes the lead to 14. We check in with Kevin Connors. What's going on, Kevin? Gentlemen, it has gone final in that top 25 matchup we've been keeping a close eye on. Texas A&M packed a wallop today, and in many ways it felt like it packed the 12th man with them too. This was supposed to be a road test. And instead, it felt like a walk through the park in College Station. Each week in college football, the tests are just so tough. And we found that out again today, guys, with another ranked team going down. Kevin, thanks a lot for that one. Sounds as if they had a good one there. They'll keep it on the ground. Forges ahead. Picks up about three to the 29. Ball's at the 29. Defense can taste getting off the field. It's third and long. Dropping back, it's Hoover. They're bringing heat. On target over the middle. And they reacted well to the completion, but it was too late to keep them from getting the first down. Third down, understanding exactly where the sticks are. You know, you, you got to stop certain routes so they don't get to certain depths. Makes a catch at the 20. And he ran away from the defense to take it in. Touchdown, TCU! And what nice.
nice play design. You get your speedster, you put him in the slot, you usually get a better matchup. And then what do you do? You fade him towards that sideline, run a go. Nice ball thrown way out wide. He just runs underneath it and just too much speed. Couldn't catch him. Gets in the end zone for six. Have a day. We're in the first quarter, and already he's over 100 yards receiving. This is ridiculous. Obviously, this coaching staff, they made a concerted effort and decision to get this guy involved in the game on offense early. They are doing exactly that. About to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. He'll take the return, try to get better field position. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. Now the UCF offense ready to go back to work. Out of the gun, they'll run it inside. And a nine-yard gain on first down leaves them with second and short. The Knights are in the hurry up. Looking for room, it's Harvey. He stopped after getting a yard out to the 30. Ball sitting right at the 30. It'll be third and short. And that was a nice second down run and setting up third and inches. And now it's physical time, right? Like, they know you might run the football. You know you probably want to run the football. How can you be more physical? Sometimes bring some extra bodies, some extra tight ends in. Go to that play that you know is your short yardage play. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Lost one on that last one. It's second and 11. Out of the gun, the inside give. Pretty good job of running to get two there to the 32. They line up, and it is a long way to the sticks from here. And that's incomplete. A defender all over him. Knocked the ball to the ground. Fourth down coming up. This is a point where you just got to be able to focus. And the critical down and distances in this game, like that third down right there, when it's a good throw, you got to make the catch. You got to be able to make that play. They'll put that return to a stop at the 33, but the offense set up in pretty good field position. Off the play fake on first down, the throw. And they got him for the sack. The defense just simply not fooled by the play action. Oftentimes, as an offense, you're hoping the run fake's going to slow down those pass rushers, but man, oh man, they had their ears pinned back. After the big first down sack for the D, it's second down. Here's a quick throw out to the left. And the 45 on his way. Finally run out of bounds, but he has this offense rolling with a first down. Well, this offense has come out slinging the pill. They are throwing it. They are trying to be aggressive. We're only in the second quarter, guys. Already, this guy has over 200 yards passing. Off the bootleg, looking to fire. Grabs it at the 25 in stride. And they'll finally bring him down after he rips off a huge play. Looking to throw, it's Hoover. Oh, picked off. Looking for more room. He's at the 40. Running inside the 20. Touchdown, Knights! What a great play by the defense and paying it off with the interception return. It is one thing to come up with the interception. No, 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 don't stop there. Turn it into a score. Make a big play and don't be content. That's right, go out and make an even bigger play, and he does it. He makes the pick and then takes it all the way back to the house. Look like a wide receiver, for goodness sakes. Turn it on the Jets, making the big play. Getting set for the point after. The kick is up and good and put one more on the lead. They're lining up to kick it off after the pick six, and that defense will come out feeling it. He'll bring it back looking for help. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. TCU will send its offense back onto the field. 
Wants to throw on first down off the play fake. Wide open downfield. Excellent job working through the air there, finding a hole in that defense and picking up a first down. Well, another catch by the big fella. And, hey, this defense now in the second level, they've got to understand that they're going to see some play action. They can't keep biting on the fake. It's not easy to do. You've got to be aware of the tight end and his release. As soon as you see him get upfield, right now you know it's pass. So don't even worry about the fake. Get your eyes focused and find the big fella to go make a tackle or make a play. And he throws another interception, his third one of the night. He'll try to take it back. And he has taken it all the way back. Touchdown, UCF! No step back in week three. They have been sharp as they extend the lead. How about a game-changing play for this defense? Stepping in front of the football and knowing what to do with it, taking it all the way to the end zone. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point is true, and the lead balloons to 21. They'll kick it off and send that defense right back out there to try to score again after the pick six. And he'll just take a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. TCU has it back, and the Horned Frogs go on offense. They'll try the run. He is going nowhere. Stop at the line of scrimmage. And the Horned Frogs want to crank the tempo. They could have used a little bit more there. Pick up a three. It's third and seven. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. On third and long, he's going to have to throw for it. Finds a spot in the middle. Really nice job there by both guys to throw and the catch to work that defense and get the first down. That's really got to make this offensive coordinator feel good calling plays. You get a completion on third down early in the game, and he should be having a lot of confidence now moving forward in this game calling plays. And the pass is incomplete, jarred loose by the hit. One final play before the end of the quarter. Tell you what, that was a lightning fast decision. You could tell he knew what he wanted to do right away, makes the decision, but maybe his footwork wasn't a little bit good, and the pass wasn't where he wanted to put that thing. I know that. The Horned Frogs decide to punt it away. Well, the defense has been able to get after this guy early and often in this game, and it's affecting his accuracy, and it's affecting this offense's ability to throw the football consistently. That's the end of the quarter, and UCF has the lead. Really strong performance so far to be able to build a lead here in the first period as we look at the stats. This could be a pivotal moment in this game as we open the second period and they try to find a way to answer. On the ground, it's Harvey. Picks up the first down, still moving. Building momentum, picking up a chunk of yardage, moving the chains out to the 34. Offense set on first down. Got it behind the line. It's Hudson. And good coverage by the defense, just a short game. They ran it on first down, now on second. He's looking to throw. He's got an open man. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. The Knights have it with a first and ten. This offense is clicking, and clearly everything is working. The offensive coordinator's calling good plays. The quarterback in his unit is executing. And this defense right now, they have no answers. Six-yard pickup on first down leaves them with second and four. Running back searching for a hole. One step wrap, two step squeeze. This junior knows how to get him on the ground. They plow ahead with the run, but still more ground needed to pick up the first down. Third down coming. And he fights his way, but they'll stop him just short of the line to gain its fourth down. Less than a yard to go for a first down, and the offense will remain on the field. On fourth down, trying to find his man. Incomplete, and the defense holds. Line gets set, first down. 
And that is a big time drop right there. Fourth down, opportunity to catch it, maybe get the first down. That is, that is tough to swallow, but as a QB, I got to walk over to him and say, listen, dude, we're going to need you later on. I still believe it. And the Horned Frogs in the hurry up. Trying to find his man on first down. Quickly to the tight end. Really good job working through his progression. You get it to him quickly, and the big tight end has a chance to run a little. And a really good job by the QB throwing an accurate throw. I, I got to hit those guys on the move, on the run, so they can do this. They can. And this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack. What a great job by this defense setting the tone early. In the first half, they've been hitting the quarterback early and often. Make him feel uncomfortable. Make him feel that pressure. Keep getting him on the ground. That's why they've built the lead. Now facing a third and long. To throw, it's Hoover. Couldn't find a man and just had to throw it away to avoid a negative play. And they'll pat the kicker on the tail and tell him to go give it a shot. Nice job by the defense. They're mixing up their look. They're third and long in field goal range. They go zone coverage. So everybody on the back end has the eye on the quarterback, and they're able to break on the ball, force the incompletion. quarterback has been really good today. He's been on top of it, seeing things really, really well. That pass right there put him over the 300-yard mark. That's a pretty good day. He'll start the return inside his five. And the coverage team gets the returner on the ground. The UCF offense back on the field, ready to go to work. Takes the handoff. It's Harvey. On the move at the 30. They stay aggressive and push their way out to the 33, and it's first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. They're going to ride this running back. And the running back didn't get much there. Nice job by the defense. You can tell they're focused in on this running back, on this run game, being physical, getting knockbacks, and limiting his carries. Just couldn't get away from the tackle. Third down conversions are a huge stat, and this one would be a doozy if they can pull it off. Off the bootleg, wants to toss it. And this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack. When it's a play-action pass, that quarterback, he really has to sell the fake. He can't tell his offensive lineman's getting beat right away while he's selling the fake. He had no shot. The Knights will punt this one away. Signals for the fair catch, and that's where they'll put it in play just outside the 20. TCU will send its offense back onto the field. It's always great to get points on a drive, but it would behoove them to try to get a touchdown this time around, Palmer. They may have to get out of their comfort zone here too, David, a little bit and just start being more aggressive and take some chances, but that's what's going to have to happen for them to win this game. Yeah, and when you're losing, obviously everything gets hyped. Everything becomes more critical. This drive is crucial because you've got to cut into this deficit and put some points on the board. Well, this offense will screen you in a variety of ways. They'll throw receiver screens, tight end screens. The running back screen also a big part of what they like to do, like you just saw there. Dropping back, it's Hoover. Oh, they really could have used that catch. Their physical pass defense, it brings up a fourth down. The Horned Frogs send out the punt unit. He'll try to really get into this one. Signals for the fair catch and hauls it in just shy of the 30. They'll crank up this drive from the 30-yard line. Off the play fake on first down to throw. Can't find his man as he took a shot trying to deliver that football, and it'll be second down. Doesn't take this defense a lot of time to get to the quarterback, man. They've got speed all over the place. They hit him so quickly, and because of that, the ball falls in. Pretty good job of running to get two there to the 32. A third and long coming up here. The give to the tailback. 
And they did not let him get to that first down line. It'll bring up a call here. The Knights will try to pin them back with the punt. Just needs a crack to get a return. Everybody stays in their lanes well enough, and they stop him at the 31-yard line. Wide receiver shows motion. Quick pass on the fly motion. Nifty little dance step. Not much working there. It'll be second and nine. And the Horned Frogs racing to the line in the hurry up. He's back to throw on second down. Gonna take a shot. Makes the catch down the right side. And it is a chunk play, a huge gain on that one before the defense brings it to an end. Hey, the defense knew coming into this one this guy was going to be a factor, but they have done nothing to stop him. They don't have any answers. This guy already has over 100 yards receiving, and we're not even done the half. The Horned Frogs getting set on first and 10. That was a nice pickup running the drag route and finding that quiet, soft spot in the zone. Yeah, drag routes not only work against man coverage, they work against zone, too. If you can find the soft spot and the quarterback gets it to him early, he can turn up field, and you saw that right there. Snagged on the outside, it's Richardson. And he goes out of bounds after coming up with positive yardage there. They'll run for it on third and short. And the Horned Frogs pick up the first down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. Yeah, and a nice job dialing up that short yardage situation play call there, David. They needed one yard, and they picked up two. Yeah, great job up front. Great job by the back knowing where they need to go. Nice having a hole where you can get through and not have to just do it all on your own as a running back. Keeping it on the ground with the single back. The tackle is made, but he's got it first and goal from the six. On the doorstep of cashing it in for the offense. A first down run in the red zone. He works his way ever closer all the way down to the one-yard line. Defense going all in to stop the run. Slams ahead. And he'll find the end zone. Touchdown, Horned Frog! Mono y mano, the offensive line gets it done, driving the defense back, creating an easy lane for that running back. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And they make the extra point to draw closer. It's 28-17. And let's check in with Kevin Connors in the studio. Kevin? Two very different emotions inside the locker rooms of these teams who did battle today. Tulane notched a victory in enemy territory. And though it wasn't a dominant win, I'd argue any win away from New Orleans is worth its weight in gold to the green wave. The circle of life in college football where one team moves on feeling like kings and the other heads home licking its wounds. And Kevin Connors keeping an eye on everything all over the country. Sounds like they had a good one there. To the air, it's Jefferson. Quickly out to the tight end. And that was some kind of collision between a couple of big bodies there, and he stopped from getting the first down. A nice job by the defense there tackling the catch and smothering the tight end. They know this offense is going to try to find him in the passing game in a lot of different situations. That time, perfect coverage, and nice job bringing the big guy down. Not easy to do. Used the play fake, now to throw. Hit hard as he released the ball on that first down pass, and it never had a chance. After the misfire, it's second down. Out of the gun, the give to the back. They get him stopped after a gain of four out through the 28. The Knights come to the line in the hurry up. And a missed 
opportunity on third down as the defense knocks it free and fourth down is coming up. Yet another punt on the way. Got to make sure that hamstring stays loose. He's been busy. They'll get down and put a stop to this return. They'll mark it at the 32. TCU has it back in the Horn Frogs go on offense. The last time they had it, they took it down the field for a touchdown. They can build some confidence that they could go back-to-back -back scoring drives here. Yeah, and remember, it's not uncommon for offenses to find themselves as the game goes on. They had some things not go their way early, but they found something last drive, David. Let's see if they can build on it. Yeah, you, you, you just pick and pick and pick until you find that place where you're like, okay, this is an advantage I have. They clearly found that dude. They score here. We're in for a ball game. We've reached the two-minute warning, and this thing has been one-sided, and they hope to at least have something to feel good about going into halftime. He's going to pass. The short hands. It's Cook. Makes the grab, and a nice game gets it to the 35. Wants to throw on first down. He's got it. Just making a play, getting it to the 23-yard line. It'll be first down. The Horned Frogs come to the line with a new set of downs. They'll throw it on first down. Can't hang on. It's incomplete. I think he was bracing for the hit and didn't hang on to the football. The aerial assault throws toward the end zone. And swatted down by the defense to stop the scoring opportunity. They were on the move, but two straight incompletions had them staring at third and ten. He makes the connection. They make the stop, but not before they do their work up top and pick up a first down. And the Horned Frogs have moved it inside the 20. Feeling some heat. The freshman able to get home with the sack. There's a timeout called as this offense tries to find a way to draw a little closer. This offensive line has just been unable to keep them away from the quarterback. Now it's second and long. He makes a grab. Touchdown, TCU! Timing and better execution, that is just what a quarterback and wide receiver need. And it's timing, it's route running, right? You gotta be precise, you gotta know exactly what yard you're running to. The quarterback receiver on the same page, that's why you get the touchdown. PAT unit on the field. And it's up and good as they draw just a touch closer. So they got the touchdown now, going to put it in the hands of their defense to finish off this half. And it'll come out to the 25. No attempt at a return. UCF has it once again. What do you think about that? Looking to go up top on first down. Going to throw it to the right. He's got his man. The clock will stop with this timeout from the offense. They'll get a chance to regroup on the sideline. Perfect play call for that big gain to open the drive. Now here they come on first and ten. The short hands. It's Harvey. And they pick up just a few on that completion. Let's see what they've got on second down. The offense calls a timeout to stop the clock. They'll line up for a second down play. Looking for a man. It's Jefferson. Unloads to the wideout. Complete in the middle. And they'll finally get him down after a terrific pickup. He's looking to throw it. And this will be incomplete. A big hit there forces second down. Time dwindling away as they try to put points on the board right before the half. Oh, he's ready to take a shot. It's complete. A huge pickup. Touchdown, Knights. Made the grab and finished the deal in the end zone. The defense just lost track of it. There's no other explanation. I've got to assume they knew he was in an eligible position. Or it was just ridiculously good scheming on the offense, Reese. I mean, just an unbelievable job of getting your guy wide open.
Now they'll line up for what they hope is automatic. And the extra point is good, and they have an 11-point lead. So here comes the kickoff after the touchdown, and the last thing you need right before the half is to give up a big return. He'll bring it back from inside his five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes, and they'll stop him at the 16. They'll come out and take a knee, and that should send us to halftime. That's the end of the second quarter. That means it's time to join Kevin in our halftime update. Fellas, you've been calling a first-rate game so far today in Fort Worth. These two defenses have really been up to the task so far, and it's hard to ignore how each of these two secondaries have impacted things. They've stayed true to their assignments, covering each receiver like a blanket. And you know what else they've done? They've wrapped up and tackled. And with that, back to Amon G. Carter Stadium and our outstanding broadcast team. All teed up and ready to go here in the second half. He thought about bringing that out for a half second, but he'll take a knee and they'll bring it to the 25. Now the UCF offense ready to go back to work. They open this third quarter on top and they built the lead on the strength of that running game. And they made a huge statement too, just proving to the other team that they're more physical, they're winning in the trenches. So here in the second half, David, just keep demoralizing this defense by pounding the football. Yeah, and, and I'm not going to let that happen. I, I riled up my guys at halftime. We're going to put more people in the box and they, we got to come out and meet the physical challenge of this offense. It's so important that this offense is able to stay on schedule. And what that means is keeping third downs management. That last completion to the tight end accomplished just that. Really nice play call. Man, those, those little chunks keep annoying the crud of you when you're on defense. It's just putting them in easy situations, chewing up four to six yards at a pop like that. Put you in a bad situation as a defensive coordinator. What do I call? Either way, priority number one, we've got to stop the run. They finally make the stop, but the big run is plenty to move those sticks for the first down. The Knights moving quickly to the line. The give to the running back from the shotgun. And he's almost to that first down marker there, saying he's a little bit short. They might want to bring out the sticks and measure, but it looks as if he'll be just short of the first down. From the gun, they'll try the middle. They get him on the ground, but it's a first down. The Knights will have it first and ten. Trying to turn the corner on the right. And he runs through one tackle and picks up a few. Got six on first down, now a lot of options on second and four. They'll run play action. Throws to the wideout. Got him downfield. Touchdown, UCF! Made the snag and strolled his way into the end zone. The offense strikes again to extend its lead here in the second half. And they got everything working. How great is this? You extend your lead, now you get your defense back on the field. Great job taking advantage of the situation and building on that lead. Ready to try the point after. And with the extra point, they're on top by 18. And for a quick update, let's go to Kevin Connors in the studio. A lot of eyeballs on your game, guys, and a few on this interesting matchup as well. Oregon State is currently trailing in this one, but it feels like the tide may be turning. These beeves have picked themselves up before and they're capable of it again today. 
It's still a one-score game. They're trailing by eight to Oregon. We've got our eye on this one and everything else going on throughout the day, guys. And how about that one? Kevin will be keeping an eye on everything going on elsewhere. Holds and fires it complete to the right. And he's knocked down immediately, but not before he moves the chains. It's first and 10 from the 31. On the move, it's Hoover. Makes his connection. Ripping through the defense. And they finally haul him down, but not before the good catch and run. Man, let that thing rip. How about this guy? Almost 450 yards on the day. He's been throwing it early. He's been throwing it often. He's been throwing it all over the yard and with a lot of success. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. Quarterback on the keeper. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. The Horned Frogs will hustle to the line. Movement here from the tight end. To the ground to try to move the chains. They were all over him. Nowhere to go as that third down play turned into a disaster. It's amazing how a play by a defensive end in the backfield can really swing the momentum not only of a series but of a game sometimes. All you're trying to do is create negative plays, to get them behind the sticks a little bit, to get those sacks, to get those tackles for losses. You see so much stunting in college football up front with the defensive line because you know once you get one of those plays, you've got the offense right where you are. Nice job by the receiver on the in route there. And how about the speed after he made his break? He was able to actually separate a little bit from the DB, helping out his QB on that one. Busting big runs like this is a total team effort. Obviously, the back has to find the hole, but you got to have everybody around him doing their job to make it a good play call. And everybody around him doesn't just mean the offensive line. The receivers getting their blocks downfield is a big deal, too. It's a huge deal. We always talk about them catching passes, but blocking is so important for their responsibilities. Fast motion from the offense. Back to throw. It's Jefferson using the quick game. And he'll step across the sidelines after making a good gain on that one. It's hard to run a route or get lost near the sidelines and understand exactly where you're at. Nice job understanding I'm starting to get close to the sidelines, throttling down a little bit, catching the football and making sure I was in bounds. How nice is it as a play caller when you've got a running back as good as this guy, right? I mean, you can just dial up conservative run calls. Nothing has to be too tricky, too fancy. You just know he's going to go make good things happen. Even when it's not blocked properly, he is still finding ways to rip off long runs. This guy now has over 150 yards rushing in the game. Doesn't look like he's slowing down, guys. They've moved it forward to the two. Now it's second and goal. They'll try to slam it in. Touchdown, Knights! And the punishment has been extended. Precision blocking up front created the open lane, and the running back followed it beautifully. Yeah, um, it's pretty easy to follow an offensive line that makes those holes and just gives you a caravan all the way to the end zone. What an unbelievable job blocking up front. Lining up for the PAT. And with the extra point, they push the lead out a little further. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. And he's coming out of the end zone. Not nearly as much as he'd hoped when he brought it out of the end zone. He'll be stopped at the 15. TCU will send its offense back onto the field. The running back takes his track off right tackle here. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Didn't get much done on that first play of the drive. It's second and 11. He'll pull it on the read. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. When you've already sent your punter out four times, 
At least he knows he's going to get his varsity letter, and his leg might get a bigger workout if they don't convert. Powers through. And he's not going to get there. The defense stands tall and makes the stop. And the Horned Frogs will line up to punt it away. They may have to pay him overtime. He's punting for the fifth time today. They'll put a stop to that return at about the 37-yard line. And the offense out on the field to go back to work. Handoff from the shotgun. Pretty good effort on that one to work his way up to the 42. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. They'll go right back to him. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. They line up with some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. Third and long, and he'll try to throw for it. Got his man downfield. Defense on skates that time. They finally drag him down at the 42. Defenses throughout the week study every third down situation. You've got to be ready for what they do, how they do it, and then be able to adjust. Great job by the offense so far having success. They can really be aggressive after that last play at second and three. From the gun, the running back has it. They get him down, but he does pick up three to the 32-yard line. Here they come on third down, and the defense has had no answer so far. They'll try to run for it. Gets away from... Oh, my goodness, he's still moving. That's why they love to feed this senior running back. He'll find those extra yards. They'll ride the running back and leave it with him. Not much running room. He's got one down to the 12. Going to work on second down in the red zone is still some ground to cover to pick up that first down. They'll go to the ground. And he is stopped immediately by the big defensive lineman. Really need to pick up this conversion and avoid having to settle for the field goal. Snap it to the back. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. And on fourth down, here comes the field goal unit. Yeah, and listen, the offense has had their way. And they've had so much success and so much production. But listen, at least the defense got a rep. You know, maybe this gets you some a spark. Maybe this gets you some energy. Maybe we'll see a little bit more life from this defense. Yeah, they may not win the game. But I think this defensive coaching staff at this point, based on how this game has gone, they're just trying to find things to build off of. Maybe that's something they can point to as they get ready for their next opponent of things they did right and things that they got to do more consistently moving forward. They tacked that last score on just for good measure as they are getting oh so close to putting this one away. The kickoff is coming. Here he comes from inside his own five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. TCU has it back in the Horn Frogs go on offense. The give to the back. They knock him down after a gain of three to the 23. And now on second down for this offense. That's the end of the quarter, and UCF has the lead. Well, guys, so far, this has been a massive beatdown, and it would appear the biggest challenge is what kind of records can they set as we have a look at the third quarter stats. So will the beatdown continue, or is this a comeback for the ages in store? We'll see as we start the fourth. Back to pass. It's Hoover. Fires to the wideout. And that's going to fall to the ground incomplete. That was a physical matchup there. Third down coming. From the gun. Wants to pass. And they can't make the play on third down. Down by multiple possessions. You can't come up empty on this drive. They'll go for it on fourth down. And it's incomplete. A missed opportunity. On first down, here comes this offense. Tell you what, it gets late in the football game, man. I got to start being aggressive. When, I, when I'm in a hole and, and, and the clock's running out, like it's going to make me have to... Got enough space. He almost punched it in for six. They'll get him down at the one-yard line. The Knights have it in scoring position on first and goal. Big reason why his team has the lead right now late is because of his... Touchdown, UCF! And the route is on. 
They tack a little more onto this lead, and they're on their way to a 3-0 start. Points, points, and more points. This offense has had their way. They just keep their foot on the gas, keep putting up points, keep putting up touchdowns. And you know what? This is one of those stats days. You look back and you're like, that guy had 12 touchdowns on the year. Well, four or five of them might have been in this game. And the extra point will tack another one onto this lead. Let's go to the studio now and check in with Kevin Connors. Kevin, what do you got? All right, guys, want to update you on a game that went final moments ago. Texas had an impressive showing at home, and to do it with some legends of the past there, Earl Campbell, Cedric Benson, and Colt McCoy, what a special victory. 60 minutes of football and a convincing outcome, and certainly a game with implications far beyond just the standings, fellas. Yeah, how about that? Sounds as if they had a good ball game there. Kevin, thanks for the update. That completion leaves us with second and medium. To the air, it's Hoover. Working that left side now. He's really close to that first down marker, but they stop him just a bit short. This defense will try to force a fourth down on third and short from the 45. And that's incomplete. A defender all over him. Knocked the ball to the ground. Fourth down coming up. And this is why coaches get paid the big bucks. Tough decision on your own side of the field. Fourth quarter. I'm trailing. Hit the afterburners, kid. And not much of a fourth down gamble when it's that much of a sure thing. An easy conversion for this offense. And this offense has got to kick it in high gear now. Making a big play, that is great. But we got to go up-tempo. We got to go fast. We're trailing big in this ball game. We got to put a lot of drives together and maybe even get lucky. And this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack. And this has been the story of the night. The offensive line getting beat up. And this is why this team is losing. You got to protect your quarterback. This defense has had a field day with their fifth sack of the game. A big play for the defense with the first down sack. Now, advantage D as the offense comes up on second down. He's looking to throw. And man, oh man, he is in the dark tonight. His fourth interception. Bringing it back. The 10. And he's going to take it all the way. Touchdown, Knights. That leads a little more comfortable now as they close in on a victory here in week three. Dude, this, you didn't think it could be any worse, right? You thought this game's over as it is anyways. Offense still throwing the football, still trying to make plays, and the defense just continues to pour it on, gets the pick, makes its way all the way to the end zone. They'll try to add another to their lead. The kick is up and good and put one more on the lead. They're about to kick it away and the defense probably can't wait to get back out there after the pick six. On the run from inside his own five. He was looking for some running room but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. TCU will send its offense back onto the field. That last pick six after a drive like that, David, can swing the momentum of a game. The defense is still celebrating. I mean, such a big play. I mean, they, they gave up some yards but did what they're supposed to do. Now, Jesse, this offense has to put a drive together. Yeah, they have to recapture some momentum here. What they can't do is go three and out and give the ball right back. And they make the tackle, but he has plenty for the first down. Well, they pick up the first against zone coverage. I think a big part of this for young quarterbacks out there is if you're going to be throwing into zone coverage, you got... And the defense is all over the quarterback, and down he goes. Man, and this defense has been flying around. They are everywhere. There's six sack on the day, spreading it around, multiple people coming from every angle. This QB has had a nightmare of a day. Not a lot of productivity on that last play. They'll try it again on second and long from the 23. Back to throw. It's Hoover. Gets it out quickly. And he'll step out of bounds after a very productive play. 
Ball's at the 29. Defense can taste getting off the field. It's third and long. Going to try to pop one on the screen. Running through contact. They finally get him stopped, but what a good job by that front wall to set up the screen and create some lanes for their running back. They'll throw it on first down. And they got him. They'll get him down for the sack. Goodness gracious, this is a master class, a clinic on how to get to the quarterback. The seventh sack of the game. Are you kidding me? That's a season for some teams. They've lived in the backfield. After the big first down sack, it's second down. He's looking to throw. Get it out on the screen. Didn't have much room to run and not a whole lot of help. Short game there and still plenty of ground to cover for the first down. The screen pass just not working there. And you figure at this point of the game trailing, you're going to have to be more aggressive and take some shot. And that is his fifth interception, a nightmare he is not waking up from. Going the other way and he's got room. Touchdown, UCF! How about that D coming up with a play like that? And I love what the secondary does here. You know the blitz is coming. You know the ball's going to come out quick. They react to it quickly, get the interception, and then Palmer, they know exactly what to do with it once they do. No doubt. And I think the hit certainly affected some of the accuracy on the throw. Quarterback's got to do a better job getting that ball out sooner. But once the ball started to flutter a little bit, didn't go exactly where he wanted, the defense was opportunistic. And not just getting the pick, but having the convoy taking it to the house. And with the extra point, they push the lead out a little further. They're lining up to kick it off after the pick six, and that defense will come out feeling it. And they desperately wanted to attempt a return, but decided not to. Instead, they'll take the touchback. Looking to throw, it's Hoover. He's right on target. They make the stop after the catch and still some work to do to pick up that first down. He's looking for an open man on second down. Just a short pass to the tight end. He's close to the first down, but they're going to mark him just a little short. I like the idea by the quarterback there. You're trying to get this first down, so you find the tight end, see if he can make a guy miss or shake a tackle. Not able to get it done. Here on third down for this offense. They'll try to get it through the air. And they'll spot it at the 38, and that'll be plenty for the first down. The Horned Frogs come to the line with a fresh set of downs. Looking to move it through the air. Grabbed over the middle. It's Richardson. He's brought down solid. Pick up but a little bit short of the first down. Still some work to do after that last completion at second down. On target to the left. A quick tackle made, but he's got plenty for the first down. And the Horned Frogs are rolling down the field. He wants to throw it again. Pulls it in. And he almost ran away from everybody on that one. A huge pickup on that play. Well, I'll give this offense some credit because they've got a lot of fight. There is no quit in them, and they're obviously trailing by a big amount in this game. They haven't had a lot of success, but they're still taking shots, and their players are still out there competing. Works his way ahead for about three. It's down at the eight. Going to work in the red zone. They can't pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. Boy, they love to move the sticks here and take a shot at it on first and goal. To the air, it's Hoover. Makes the grab. Takes it to the house. Touchdown, Hard Rock. Nice pitch, nice catch. And listen, maybe this helps next game, right? Like we're trying to find a rhythm, find something that works, find somebody to go to. And this offense is struggling. You're down by a 1,000. But I like that they continue to fight. On to attempt the try. Yeah. 
blitz the uprights. So they put together a ninth play, 75-yard drive. And they get it into the end zone with a six-yard touchdown pass. On the move from inside is five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. The UCF offense back on the field, ready to go to work. They had this thing in a hammer lock at halftime, and now they are really ratcheting up the pressure, David. And I tell you what, this offense doesn't have to change a thing, Palmer. They've done what they want in the first half and starting off the second half in the same fashion. And I like how they're letting different guys get involved, too. They've got so many different playmakers all over the field. Ripping off a pretty good chunk of yardage. They've got it out to the 41 with the first down. There's an example of the offense taking advantage of all the attention the defense is giving this outstanding running back. Remember, he's one of the best in the game. They're expecting him to get the football. So the quarterback says, you know what? I'll just keep it. No one's keying on me. I'm going to get upfield and find an explosive play. And the defense is still fighting. They, they haven't had the day that they dreamed of. You know, talking to the coaches coming to the game, like they thought they had a good plan. They'd be ready to attack and, and, and limit some of the damage this offense has done. They haven't done it today, though. they got to go back to the drawing board, figure some things out, because this wasn't a great day. Now from the 36-yard line, it's first and 10. The give and tick, 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 tick. And the defense snows him under after a very short game. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. Here's the handoff. Keeps the legs moving. And the defense finally makes the stop after the sweet run and good game. Well, this was an offensive showcase out there today. We thought it would be a high-scoring game, and it certainly delivered. If you love offense, then you love this type of game. Both offenses going up and down the field, seemingly at will, throwing the ball, running the ball. But, David, I feel like if you're a fan of defense, maybe this wasn't your cup of tea. Ah, uh, more defense optional. <laughs> you didn't really get too much of that stuff, but, you know, listen... You got to get a few stops late in the game. You got to get one, actually, just kind of one stop with this many points that was being scored. You got the stop late. That's why you got the dub. So that's going to do it for us. For Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, I'm Reese Davis saying so long. This has been another presentation of EA Sports College Football.